Hey guys, it's almost Halloween and I saw something I wanted to create yet again. With no skills at all and absolutely no expectations about what will come out of this. But that seems to be my theme, so let's go. The thing I saw that I wanted to create was this. Look at it. It's like a, a cloak, but it's it's a bat. But it's, it's a cloak with a hood and buttons and it, it's a bat. And it just looks cool. I don't know. I like the look of it, so I'm going to try and recreate it. So the first thing I had to do was make a pattern. There are heaps of hooded cloak patterns online that you can download and alter if you also want to make this hood, but I made my own because I've made a cloak before in the past for a raven cosplay that I remembered basically was just a circle for the cape and a sort of scoopy shape for the hood. So with that in mind, I went ahead and used Clo 3 d to get the rough sizing and then transferred it to paper. Focusing on the cloak first, I used an old mixing bowl to make the pointy bits along the bottom of the garment and then I moved on to patterning the hood. This idiot just got his head stuck in the stripe watch. Oh god, now he's trying to scratch himself again. I'd take it off but you just look <laughs> at your face. I guess I'll just start cutting the fabric and we'll see what happens. Worst case scenario is that I need to buy another blanket. Freeze frame, did I mention I'm making the outfit of this cloak from a blanket? For some reason it was cheaper to buy a fleece blanket than it was to just buy the raw fabric. How does that happen? Well, I am confusion. As for the red lining, I have like 500 meters. So this is the final pattern that I came to for the cloak. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's gonna work, I don't know if it's gonna come together, I don't even really know if it's gonna fit, but I'm gonna try it and I guess we'll see. I'm thinking maybe this part will actually get cut in half, like up this way, so that I will have a seam where I can actually insert the ears. I'm not too sure, I'm gonna look back at the reference photo and see where they're gonna go in, because at this point I have absolutely no idea. This piece is absolutely fine, the hardest part is gonna be trying to sew and Turn these parts inside out with the lining. On the actual one, the lining they did was just like nothing. It, it didn't have the points. It was just like a hem, basically. But I wanted the lining to match, so I went ahead and cut out all the fabric. Oh my god. I can't believe you've done this. The worst part was cutting out all the curves that will form the points on the hem of the cloak, but it wasn't too bad. And here's a break from cutting fabric to painting MDF. I decided to cover the ugly MDF from the shelves that I use as a cutting table. Because I didn't want to spend any money, I used Gesso Primer and acrylic paint because why not? Don't tell me this was a bad idea. Strangely enough, my cat didn't want to help me for once. He just stared at me while I worked. You want to help me? No way. Not this time. Not this time. No. Not this time. Not this time. No way. Wow, that was a cool transition, but now we are back to cutting. So I cut out the hood of both the outside and the lining. And then using some extra pattern pieces I made, I went ahead and cut out the teeth and the ears as well. Working on the smaller parts first, I assembled both the ears and the teeth by adding a piece of iron-on interfacing to one side and using some stuffing that I stole from my pillow to puff them out.
Then I sewed up the two halves of each main cloak piece, both the lining and the outer, so that they formed a circle ready to be attached together. Right sides together, I pinned them in place, and when everything was pinned together, I sewed the cloak right around all the pointed curves and both sides, leaving only the part around the neck opened for turning. After that, I carefully clipped around each curve at the bottom before turning it out the right way and using a point turner which, by the way guys, is basically just a pointy piece of plastic. Save your money and use a pen. And then after top stitching each point, the first part of the cloak was complete. Yay! And then it was onto the hood. And starting with the lining, I lined up the two right sides together, pinned and sewed them. And after that, I clipped the curves and then moved onto the outer. The outer has a seam where the airs fit, so I started by measuring and lining that part up, although it still came out wonky, despite my measuring. Don't ask me why. And then did the same thing by lining up the right sides together and sewing. Yay! So now I can match the two pieces right sides together and I pinned and I sewed. And clipped the curve. Don't forget to clip your curves. And there we go. For the teeth, I decided I would just hand stitch them in since I had some hand stitching to do anyway for this and it would make them more temporary if I wanted to remove them in the future. So I attached the hood to the cloak. I started with matching the two right sides of the outer pieces together, pinning carefully and sewing that. And for the inners, I sewed up the seam by hand. And now for the buttons. I started by measuring very roughly where to place them, thinking my machine would do most of the work. I guess we're sewing buttonholes by hand. So by hand it was, and it was awful, but I got there in the end. Thankfully the buttons were easier to sew on, although my camera gave up way before reaching that point. Here's also a close up of my really bad buttonhole sewing. Looks fine on this side, right guys? And then, Bruh. I should really practice sewing buttonholes, um, but I just don't really want to. Yeah. Other than that, I really like this swishy cape. It's so swishy, it's very heavy. The minky fabric really weighed it down. I mean, it makes the inside really nice and really plush, but it makes the whole thing so heavy. Okay, bye guys.